Today I'm going to speak to you about being God's planters. We are God's planters. This parable makes me, I believe, makes you us wonder and ask so many questions. Who is the wheat? Who is the wheat? If God sows the good seed, then why would God allow the enemy to plant the wheat among the wheat? If God controls the field, the world, why would evil Satan have power? That's the question of theodicy in theology. If God is good, if God is just and powerful, why evil? Why would we face the evil in this world, in God's field? On the other side, for many years, Christians also use this parable as to prove our judgment. We are the good seeds and they are the wheat. We will shine, they will be burned in fire. Even though the parable tried to challenge the quick and judgmental thinking of the disciples and the crowd, as Saint Paul or the Gospel of Matthew tried to articulate, we fail to notice and understand that and continue to judge others as hearers, as believers and preachers. At the same time, if you are here today in person or online and you feel injustice or you are wrestling with God for justice in this world, you, we, may feel confronted by this text. Even some of the words, the names such as householder, the slaves, the wheat, and the wheat may create and cause and trigger some of the embodied and embodied memories of oppression and injustice that we experience it as an individual or as a, as a community or some communities are still facing. So this parable does not resolve the theodosy question. Instead, it provides us an ethical response to how we can live in a world where good and evil exist together. How can we continue being and showing the good news in this world? How can we be or demonstrate that we are God's planters? We are the good seed. We belong in God's reign, in God's kingdom. The question that the servant asked resonates with me, with most of us, I believe. Master, did you not sow the good seed in your field? Where then did the weed come from? The question resonates with my prayers, I believe with your prayers, our conversations after we hear the news, most nights or we listen what's going on in the world, we ask these questions. As pastors, as teachers, family members or friends, we ask why God? What can we do? We want to resolve what's going on in the lives of individuals or in the world. So for the people, for us, living in such reality, what does this parable hold? Does this parable minimize the people who work it are still working towards liberation and freedom? No. First, in this parable, Jesus is inviting us to know that we are God's planters. God. We are not alone in the field. We are God's planters. We are not the owners of the seed or the field, but we are God's seed. In a complicated world, as a community, we discern and wrestle with God. Like the servants who asked the owner about the weed, we know there is evil. We know there is Satan. We know there is a weed in the field. So we ask questions. We discern and continue being God's good seed. And our relationship and being God's seed does that resist 
the evil in this world. So our role is not to judge. God will judge the good and the evil. But our role is to discern and to continue being God's planters, God's wheat that will give life for others. Being planters have firmed our faith and love we feel and receive from God. We do good in the world. We use the resources for good. The weed uses the resources to hurt others, but we use God's resources to give life to and for others. And second, this parable and Jesus' message in this parable reminds us to look inside, to judge less and to love more. There is so much we don't know in this world. We remain in God's reign, in God's kingdom through God's love, not because of our perfection. We are not called to gather the wheat even because we are limited and because of our limitation, we may uproot the wheat while trying to remove the weed. St. Augustine in one of his writings writes, I will quote him, I'm gonna quote him, I tell you of a truth, my beloved, there is a wheat and tears even in these high seats. Let the good tolerate the bad and let the bad change themselves and imitate the good, end of quote. So the church and us need to show the power of tolerance rather than fragmentation. And the political and the cultural divide in our world this time is known. In the United States, in Africa, in the country I was born and raised in Ethiopia, political, social, and ethnic fragmentation cause so much destruction, war, political and social divisions that causes a lack of peace and instability in the lives of many people. So tolerance and peace come from the church. We know that the weed and the, the wheat both exist in the field of God. Martin Luther King Jr. preached nonviolent resistance and preached peace against war in this country and that's a model for many countries. Yes, we are God's justice, and we are called to do justice because we are God's planters, and we are sinners and righteous at the same time. We know that as Lutherans, and we remain God's planters because of God's love. So as St. Augustine reminds us, our tolerance is maybe for the weed to return and to come to be the weed. We are sinners and righteous at the same time, fully and wholly reliant on God's grace. Amen. And sir, this parable reminds us about the eschaton, the fulfillment, and the hope we expect through faith, not work, through faith, now and here. We believe that Christ will come again. We confess that today and every day, hopefully, in our house, in our homes too. Especially if we read and reread the Paul's epistles, you can see how much the early Christians were engaged and hoped for Christ's return. The, the return of Jesus is hope, the time of harvest, a time we will eat and celebrate with Christ. For all nations beyond all the ethnic and class and economic differences, Jesus will provide a table, the table for all. All will belong in Jesus. And it's not the future, it's here, Jesus is here. Jesus is present in this table, in this church, sharing love and peace for the world. All are welcome here in this table. So for the early Christians, this message, Christ's return, the eschaton, the fulfillment, was their strength. Their strength in the face of persecution, in the face of days, and burning in fire, and all the sacrifices they made 
for God, for the God they loved and the God who loved them. So today, let anyone with ears listen. There is a harvest time. A harvest season will come. So as God's planters, we continue being that with more love, with more grace and compassion to one another. So I want to come back to the why evil question. I'm not preaching perfection here today or a life without questions or struggle. Instead, I believe a Christian life is full of questions and struggle with God and one another. The psalmist, the psalm we read this morning reminds us that, saying, teach me your way, O God, so I can walk in your way. I can't do this by myself. Being God's plant is walking in God's way, fully trusting in God's love and mercy. So the psalmist is saying, the enemy is against me. My enemies, they don't know your way. So please do not let me down. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give me your strength to your son, to your daughter, because I can't be nonviolent. I can't be merciful. I can't show love and mercy for others just by myself. So God, help me. So like the psalmist, we are praying and asking for God's guidance and support to empower us, to enable us so that we can walk by faith with the Holy Spirit in the world which is evil and good at the same time. And we can walk beyond the evil that surrounds us. So the God who planted us we are not the owners of the field. We are not the owner of the seed. It's God who planted us. And we walk trusting that God. So the God who planted us in his, in her reign will protect us. God will protect you. God will protect me until the harvest day. That is the hope we have in Jesus Christ. May all with ears listen. That's what Jesus said. The love God has for you. The love God holds for me, for you, for us in this world where there is evil. So let us judge less, but love more. May God help us to be and to do love justice. There is no love without justice. There is no justice without love. So as Christians, what we demonstrate in this world is love justice. Love justice together. For God's people, for God's creation, for all of us in the church and outside of the church. Amen.